What's going on? My name's Tori Kravitz, joined by my co-host, Alicia Toot. Welcome back to She's with the Band. How are you doing today, Alicia? She's with the Band. I'm doing great. How are you, Tori? Ooh, is that like our new uh, theme song? She's with yeah, the so, Band. Yeah, but like more aggressive. She's with the Band. She's with is that the better? Band. Yeah, maybe yeah. we should put the singing aside and allow our guests to maybe take the reins <laughs> on our Maybe she can like teach intro. us how to how to scream this properly, so we're not just like grunting at all our poor yeah. listeners who are Sounding listening like to we're this just, right now. Just hurt while saying our show title. <laughs> like I just stubbed my toe, and I'm like, oh, she's, she's a band. The band. Like it's a it's like a new curse. Like yeah, I'm pissed time. off. <laughs> you know what? There's oh a reason my we gosh. don't have a theme song. There's a reason we don't sing it as well. That but that is incredibly true. But if I were to trust someone to sing it, it would be our guest of the day um, as we are welcoming Casey Carlson onto the show, lead vocalist of Deadlands, also soon hitting the road with Nita Strauss. Um, at this point, she, she's, you know, embarking on the tour since this is live. And it's just, it's incredibly cool to have seen someone we saw in our feeds who was super popular, going viral on TikTok all of the time to now being on our show. I know, like she's somebody that I've just seen on my Explore page constantly, but I never really thought until recently like oh yeah like why don't we hit her up about doing this podcast I never imagined like talking to her really crossing paths with her um just because the internet is so vast so the fact that like we were emailing back and forth I was like this is so sick because I feel like she's just kind of like the new generation of what a female metal vocalist can be and like showing the power of the internet that she's gone from just doing some TikToks and reels in her house to like you said going on tour with Nita Strauss has her own band um she's just a freaking powerhouse she can sing and scream anything and she has a cool journey, too. She's one of those kids like us where she used to pay for meet and greets to meet these bands. She used to go to all these concerts. I think she said she had like 50 under her belt, um, you know, throughout her metal love and lifetime. And then she goes from that to meeting these bands, to paying to meet them, to collaborating with some, to some of them seeing her viral videos being like, hey, you're the girl who did that cool shit, getting that recognition. So yeah. her journey is really neat. And just seeing someone else who's a powerhouse online, who has that presence and is able to work it to their benefit to create a career out of a passion. Hell yeah. I know if anyone's for it, it's us too. Yeah. I just, I love seeing people where I, I know that she genuinely loves the genre. You could tell like she's, she's very up to date with like the new music that's coming out and is always yes. jumping on to support new artists as well and collaborating with people and like that inspires me so much. And that's exactly what this podcast is all about. So I, I couldn't think of a more per- perfect person to talk to you today. Yeah, it's yeah. going to be super fun. I think also just the fact that she kept coming up in our feeds is kismet. Of course, there's a yeah. certain extent because we're so in the metal world and, you know, we, we follow a lot of pages similar to that. But I just remember seeing her over and over thinking, who is this chick? Then clicking it thinking, whoa, that's a lot of talent, like a little bit of envy even running through my veins. Like, it's just it's amazing how well she can sing and the good kind of envy, guys, not a bitter. Envy. Yeah, so I feel like maybe um, we need one or two more episodes with Melissa Cross to get past the meow phase of screaming and then maybe maybe we could, like, like four have or five a sliver of Casey's talent <laughs> yeah man it's it's amazing what she can pull off so with all of that said she has the tours coming up all of the stories all of the crazy viral moments and moments of interacting with these iconic bands so let's bring her on and learn some more shall we I am ready let's do it let's do it Casey, welcome to She's with the Band. How are you today? I'm good. How are you? No complaints over here. We were just raving about you and how psyched we are to have you on the show. It was so funny. I remember uh, Tor and I talking about upcoming guests and just saying, we always are seeing this badass chick in our feed over and over and over. And now everybody, she has officially joined us. So welcome. (laughs) Thank (laughs) you. It does track that like we would just have badass metal women on our explore pages at all times so that includes yes. you big Makes time sense. <laughs> thank you thank you I mean there's there's so many now like there's so many awesome women that are like exploding in the scene currently my I have my friend Taylor Destroy who's like super awesome she also like sings and screams her band's like doing a bunch of shit behind the scenes and I'm like oh my god like I'm so excited oh wait can I curse 
yeah, yeah. This is not okay. Best Buy. All right, sick, sick. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, like Taylor Destroy, Mixie from Stitched Up Heart is one of them. Um, Addie from Halocene, Halocene. Uh, they're everyone's just fucking going off right now. Lauren Babic. I I'm like I love seeing it. I want it all. Like give it yes. to me. <laughs> I mean, I love that. Like the moment we start the episode with you, you're already like shouting out so many people that you support and love. Like that's what this whole thing is about. And like props to you using your platform for some good. And those oh, are great you. picks too. There yeah, they're fucking awesome. They're awesome. Um, like there's there's so many people I want to work with in the industry, like regarding especially like badass female vocalists. Like there's there's so many like rising up and it, we're all at the same time yes. just like mm-hmm. consuming it. And I'm like, <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's about time that we have our moment. I mean, I say we, I'm Absolutely. not a vocalist, but like in my dreams I am. <laughs> same, right? I mean, you can be. Anybody yeah. can be, to be honest. Like if you if you put in the work, you can be. I guarantee it. Hell guarantee yeah. it. We- we love that ethos. It's definitely something we relate to so much because as people who are starting in music so young, we just had to put in so much work over so long. And then you start to see like the the benefits of it, which I know is the stage you're at right now. So um, oh, yeah. I guess, Tor, let, let's get into uh, to her really wild story and the career that has blossomed over time because you, you yeah. really do have a cool little journey in terms of just your platforms and how everything started online for you. Yeah. Thank you. I, I mean, mean, well, I would say it's it's gotten crazy. It's gotten like super crazy, super quick. So I'm like, oh, like, I don't <laughs> know what to do anymore. <laughs> I mean, I suppose that's Aww. kind of what everyone wants and hopes for where they start posting reels and like trying to get their name out there and get their talent out there. It's like only dream of the kind of quick success and uh, rise to stardom that you've had. Um, I mean, I like, I feel like I'm kind of jumping the gun, but I'm just dying to talk about the fact that you're about to go on tour with Nita Strauss. So I feel like, can we please just like get straight to that? Yes, definitely. definitely. <laughs> <laughs> like, how did you even end up in touch with her? Because it's, well, I could see how it would be such a good fit considering her album has so many different vocalists on it. You got Dorothy, Lizzie from Hailstorm, Arch Enemy, um, and you can sing that whole range and scream it. Um, how'd you get in touch with her? And like, was there a vetting process? Did you have to audition? Like, what was the situation to get that kind of gig? So it's, it's so funny. Like, I, I say this, but like, it, it's not really like it happened. Like, I always say like, oh my God, this just fell into my lap. But like, realistically, like I do work my ass off, like not to be like that, but like, I do, I really do like try and work hard and, um, being a student and, as well as I literally just quit my job like three weeks ago just to do this full time. Like, congrats! I, dude. I was working. Thank you. Hell but yeah. yeah! So putting in the hours. Um, I was releasing some covers, of course, because that's like the main thing that I do. Um, and I was I was sitting in a hair salon. I was like, gotta get my hair blown out, and. I get a DM from Nita Strauss and she's like, Hey, like I'm doing a tour. And I was wondering if you wanted to be my touring vocalist. And I was like, do you have the right, do you have the right girl right now? Like, Like, are you sure? (laughs) Literally. I was looking at the verified and I'm like, okay, so it literally is Nita. What is she doing in my DMs? So she's asking me to be your touring vocalist. And I'm like, fuck yeah. Like, of course. Um, and she was like, okay, so we just need you to like try out a couple of different songs. Um, so she asked me to do Wolf You Feed and Dead Inside. Um, I just sent her some raw clips of me doing it. Um, I think I, I was literally at my school because I was like, shit, I have to do this, but I also have to record <laughs> some stuff for school. So whatever. Um, so I just sent some clips of me singing along to it. Um, and then I was working with like the other songs that hadn't been released yet um and they were like yeah we'd love to have you on the tour and funny enough um the way that she found out about me she 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 said she'd see me on like her explore page and like for you page or whatever um beforehand but her like content manager her name is Anna Massard she works with like a bunch of bands she's like photography she does photography yeah she so you know Anna what a fucking small world literally Florida so yeah yeah. (laughs) So she works with like a bunch of different bands, um, one of which was Wage War, which I had just met her at the Wage War show that I was just at. And um, 
she was the one who sent me over like because Nita and her were like talking back and forth like oh we need a like I really want a vocalist and she was like well do you want male or female um and Nita was like I really want female I just like don't know who can handle it and then Anna sent me over and she was like what about this chick (laughs) and then Nita was like yes and I was like (laughs) man so weird. So that must make you feel so good though with where you're at and what you're putting out there and just it's like such a insane affirmation that's that's why yeah no definitely and like I I'm so grateful for the opportunity like I can't even like get over it the amount of times I've said thank you to them they're probably like all right Kate, like, shut up like it's <laughs> like enough. we get it <laughs> yeah yeah we get it you're thankful but I I genuinely like I I just want to make them proud because especially you get nervous like when it's not your own music, if that makes sense, because yeah. you're you're basically taking the artist's vision in your hands and you are expected to deliver what the original vocalist has done. And uh, like, it's mm-hmm. big shoes to fill. David Draymond, Elisa White Blues, Lizzie Hale, Dorothy, like all these people. I'm like, holy shit, like I really gotta, I really <laughs> gotta step it the fuck up. So I, I'm so humble, but like anyone who's looked at your Instagram, you're beast like the kind of vocal performances you do and your range is outrageous like I feel like you could genuinely sing anything thank you I I really try I I try so hard to work on like versatility because I I just I want to be that bitch that like does absolutely (laughs) fucking everything and people are like oh my god she literally just crushed like infant annihilator but here she's singing Demi Lovato what the fuck is wrong with her like yeah you know I think you kind of like I I've noticed a, a common thread with a lot of people we've talked to on this podcast that there is that pressure to feel like you have to be a jack of all trades especially as women who are trying to prove ourselves in the music industry that like you have to be good at everything or like just be really strong at what you do do you feel that pressure a bit oh 100 percent, 100 percent. especially because like metal is such like a male dominated industry so coming up as a female like brand new into it you got to be like all right well listen like I can do anything that a guy can do like I can totally just and smash it out of the water like I really try and exceed expectations as much as I possibly can and you know sometimes it's hit or miss like some people especially with Linkin Park Linkin Park triggers people it gets people so mad. And Wait, like, why? Is it because you're covering this band keepers? that everyone loves? Yeah, exactly. What, why do you think it, it pisses them off a little bit? I love the fact it makes them mad. <laughs> it, it makes them so mad. It's because Chester is so worshipped in the community, yeah. especially since his passing. Like, And I understand. Like, I, I absolutely understand. I think he's a phenomenal vocalist. But even even when men cover Linkin Park like people will shit on them in the comments and I'm like it's it's big shoes to fill like I guess it's that kind of thing and most people are like no like Chester is untouchable you can't fucking cover him and I'm just like I do it anyway because I love him so that's so good I mean just talking about big shoes to fill there of course as we mentioned there's so many different guest vocalists and different takes that are on the upcoming record of Nina's so how was it preparing for those different songs and kind of processing and practicing the various guests vocals but still making them your own in a way like was that super tedious for you um honestly not super because I think with the amount of time that I've been doing covers like for so long like you you're so used to like okay well I I want to put like exactly like I I know how to get enough of the artists like original vibes in um and then like just put like a tiny little flair of myself just because like it's like it's like a balance like if you put too much of you then people are gonna get fucking mad and they're gonna roast you like I I know this at this point people are not gonna enjoy it and then if you don't put enough of you people are just gonna be like oh you're like copying them so yeah it's it's like a gentle gentle little balance that you have to figure (laughs) out but I I think knowing all of the artists previously like I've I've listened to Hailstorm like since I was young um I'm not like super super into them but like I know Lizzie's voice like the back of my hand um I know David Draymond's voice like the back of my hand Elisa's like please like I she (laughs) was somebody that I used to try and emulate when I was learning how to scream so like at at that point it was just like okay now where do I put my own flair in that was pretty much Mm -hmm. the only thing to figure out damn I mean with so many ambitious vocal performances 
I'm curious if there's a cover that you've done in the past or even like one that you're planning for this upcoming tour where it has been like the craziest kind of scream you've ever done or just the most like it has there been a moment where you surprised yourself with what you were capable of oh my god yeah the the first time that I was trying to do tunnels which is like when I make my tongue in that weird position position I just go yeah and it like makes a really <laughs> and weird. what is it yeah yeah it's like <laughs> It looks you like, like that. fold your tongue over. That was yeah. so fascinating. Huh. Yeah. I, yeah, I like the Melissa really Cross have... episode all over again. I'm going I'm I'm to be trying to do that all night. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. And it, it just sounds like abhorrent. It sounds disgusting. And I have, I literally have a video on Snapchat of me being like, I just did. <laughs> and like, I, I was trying to learn it for so long. Like I would, I would watch videos of Will Ramos, like doing his vocals. Um, and then I would just like play around because like most of the time, like if I'm sitting here and I'm like trying to get a new scream, I'll just be like, oh, just like trying to figure <laughs> out new tongue shapes that I haven't done or like new mouth shapes. It's it looks absolutely ridiculous. But like once it comes to fruition, it's like, oh, my God, like that's a new sound that I have never heard come out of myself. So I shock <laughs> myself all the time. And recently I've been like learning how to fry scream too like I I'm predominantly a false chord vocalist just because that's what I've been doing for seven years and um now that I'm trying to learn like an entirely different technique like I learned how to breathe and everybody was like what you know how to do this and I'm like <laughs> apparently like I didn't know that's crazy so, it's, so it's very fun I've I've heard that before. So like screaming, essentially, it's just different mouth shapes and different things that your tongue make all the different sounds then. Yeah. Because I'm, yeah. I'm not a screamer. I'm learning. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. It's like, it's like the resonance game. It's, it's like, where can you place yourself where the air has not hit? It's, it's very hmm. weird to think about. This is cool. I feel like I, I don't know about anyone else, but like when I watch your videos, I'm like, what's her secret? How does she do it? How does she sound so monstrous? So I guess that's that just the, some of the question. Yeah, it's it's the range that shocked me, to be honest. I know we touched on it really briefly, but I just remember first seeing your videos come up over and over on my Instagram. I'm like, all right, we got to see what this chick's all about. I click one video and you were screaming your head off to Ginger. And then the next video, you were singing these absolutely stunning, soaring vocals to Evanescence. Like, I just couldn't wrap my brain around <laughs> the fact that it was just so yin yang, but all you and it all sounded so fucking good. So which which kind of vocal style was it more difficult to train when it came to learning and to techniques? Did one come a lot easier than the other? Well, first of all, thank you. But um, I would say I still like try and work on singing to get consistently more powerful. Like once you get a handle on screams, like you're kind of good. Like you don't really have to work super hard for them because at that point it's just muscle memory. Um, mm -hmm. When it comes to singing, when you're trying to find like, especially while writing like different melodies, different ways to sing these lines that you're like, oh my God, did this person write this or whatever? Um, or even just trying to emulate other people, it it is definitely more difficult. And I, I still want to work on my singing as like the main focal point of like getting better, if okay. that makes sense. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it totally makes sense. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and and something too that I we were talking about like collaborations here and I know that you played with Motionless and White not too long ago so when it comes to like collaborating with other artists some of the female vocalists that you really love what do you look for when it comes to the qualities in an artist where you're like that's someone who I want to work with I'm inspired by that person um like Nita and Motionless honestly this is a great question I've never been asked this um <laughs> an interviewer's favorite compliment by the way <laughs> <laughs> no no literally like most of the time I get like the same like oh like what got you into metal what got you into screaming but this is like this is great yes. good job first of all <laughs> but <laughs> honestly what are what are the qualities um I would say definitely like the overall like way that the person composes themselves like they have to be a good person if I want to work with them first of all like Chris is just so kind and genuine and the way that he like talks to his fans is like no other person like his fan interaction is like crazy um and he's of course one of the people that I've wanted to work with since I was like 12 so I'm like <laughs> I love him I love Aww. I love what he does I love his vocals I love how he keeps like evolving 
strangely enough, and usually they say like, oh, bands when they get older, like they turn to shit. But Moshe Zemite has just been continuously getting better in my opinion. Mm -hmm. So I'm just like, he like he just knows what the fans want. He knows what he wants. And it it's just he just keeps getting better. His his vocals keep getting better. Even I saw them for the first time, I think I was 14. And it was at, I want to say, PlayStation Theater in New York City, mm. which I think is shut down. Don't quote me on it. I but do think so. <laughs> I think so. Um, and even just like his vocal ability from then compared to now is like absolutely insane. It, like I watch videos of concerts on my Snapchat all the time. I just used to save them in my memories and just like scroll through them <laughs> and going and like flip-flopping back and forth between them, you really hear the difference and how well he's like gotten a handle on his vocals. He's he's went to a vocal coach, I think that started like in the midst of COVID. Um, and like, he's really gotten control of his range. And uh, Spencer Charnas is one of the people that I really, really, really want to work with. Um, Cause, and I've, I've met him on multiple occasions. Like he's fucking awesome. Like he, he we've exchanged hugs and it, he's like, Oh my God. I want to tell this story because I, I find it like really like full circle moment for me. Um, and it's like super trippy. So a few, I think it was last year, I did a cover of Farewell to Flesh by Ice Nine Kills. And um, I bought VIP to see Ice Nine. And because obviously like as a fan, like I'm going to buy VIP because I want to be my idols. Like, of course. So I buy VIP and I'm sitting there front row and I ask him a question. I'm like, do you do false quarter fry? Cause I like, it's sometimes like I couldn't tell. Now I feel like I can tell pretty good. But I was like, do you do false quarter fry? And he was like, I do fry vocals. And he goes, wait, you're the one that did that like sick farewell to flesh cover. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, like you I must didn't have lost it. I did <laughs> like inside. I was like, oh my God. Yeah. But inside I was like, Ah, like I had no idea. I had no idea he like even saw it. Like I didn't know that he like actually watched it. He was like, "Yeah, this girl's like really sick, guys." Like just so you know. And I was like, wow. "And that's the power of the internet, yeah. isn't it? Who knows yeah. who's watching anything Seriously. at any time?" And and now yeah. you're on tour with Nita Strauss soon. Exactly. And then even with that, like, okay, he recognized me from that cover. And then the Trinity of Terror tour rolls around. So. I'm going in and watching a Trey U side stage just because like, why wouldn't you, you know? <laughs> and um, Spencer comes in like through through the backstage door and I'm like, oh, hey. And he's like, oh, hey, he gives me like the biggest hug. And I'm like, this just, this is happening right now? Like, this is, this is Aww. crazy. But that shit's yeah, so validating. So, yeah. And it's so weird. Now, now Ice Nine Kills follows me, Deadlands. And it's just, it's like a whoa kind of thing. Because it's like you, sometimes you can meet your idols. Exactly. And you spend <laughs> years looking up to them. And now they're like, you're fucking sick. And I'm like, <laughs> that's, it's just so weird. But any going back yeah. to the original question, um, he, he is one of the people that like, I really want to work with on a live show just because Spencer with his crowd work is no other. And I will say that to the day I die. When he steps on the actual crowd and starts walking on them, I don't know if you guys have ever seen like clips of him do that, but like as somebody in the audience who has like witnessed that firsthand so many times, like it doesn't get old. Like it never gets old. And it's always like, oh my God, like they're supposed to be there. He's like here. Yeah. It's I mean, so weird. With you now coming up playing Blue Ridge Rock Festival, first tour of Deadlands coming up, are you taking some notes? Are there certain like little tricks up your sleeve for the show? Oh my God, yeah. Oh my God. All, yeah. of, all of those years of saving TikToks and watching those performances. Right. Exactly. They'll come into play now. <laughs> exactly. And I mean, I think, I think having such great idols to like look up to and like going to so many fucking shows I think I have like 50 or something under my belt for someone who's been like who came in late in the scene I came in when I was probably like 12 like this is this is like insane watching everybody and then now I'm like I need to translate this into my shows because I want I want the audience to feel the way I felt when I was watching 
all of my favorite performers. Like it's, it, that's one of the things that I really want to stick to people is like stage presence and crowd work and all of that shit. I mean, it's so, so what circle. were some of those? It is full circle for sure. Yeah. I, was, I was just going to ask like, what were some of those nuggets you did pick up and ones that we might be seeing on this upcoming tour? Is there anything in specific that you saw your idols do and you think, okay, I'm going to pay a little homage here and work this into our shows? Oh, definitely. I, I have been dying to step on the crowd. Like that's one <laughs> thing. So I'm like, if we get a big enough crowd, I absolutely will step on them. Like, I don't care. <laughs> I, and I, and I think be, I, I'm only like a, 120 ish pounds I don't think I'm that heavy so like I think I think it'll be okay but I think it'll be fine. Um, <laughs> no I don't know if we're gonna be playing this song on tour but we have a song called Black Hole and one of the things that I've been doing recently is like during Black Hole I'll go out off the stage and I'll like have the crowd sit like crisscross applesauce just like while I'm singing and I'll just be like looking at them and singing and I'm just like this feels so intimate like it just like I like feels low-key naked because you, everyone's just watching you so close and mm-hmm. sometimes like as a as a performer like you kind of forget the crowd is there mm-hmm. if that makes sense like especially because I still get stage fright like no no one believes me but I still get stage fright and um so I tend to like look over the crowd but like once you're in it you're like oh my god like all these people are like here to watch us and that's like fucking amazing so hopefully I can do that on the tour um I don't think I I do some big stomps those are my favorite parts <laughs> of the set like when I just kick my fucking leg all the way up to the sky and just stomp right back down like I'm a like, Mitch that's Luker my stomp. favorite exactly that's cool. exactly yeah. my oh, favorite best in power honestly <laughs> sorry I didn't mean to bring the mood down but I just like no, oh my god the stop <laughs> no, the stop exactly Spencer does that too and I every single time he stomps fog goes up so I'm like oh we just we just got a fog machine too so I'm like yes oh, I was cool. gonna say if you wanted me to like stop by a show with a fog machine I'll just like press the button and time it perfectly with your stomps the whole night like I'll oh my god yeah woman. oh my god please <laughs> like you can I'll I will hire you right now to press the yes. button you just got a gig tour good job i'm officially the smart woman this is literally the the proof of of hustling and putting your name out there guys you never know just live live right here you're watching it all go down exactly Um, honestly that's how it happens so (laughs) go for it i kind of want to talk more about being close to the crowd and your audiences because it's been extremely fun seeing how confident you are in your videos and that's been catching on like fire lately on tiktok and we all know firsthand how nerve-wracking and incredibly scary it can be putting yourself out there on a youtube or a tiktok or an instagram any platform it's terrifying at first you're up close to the camera you're being super vulnerable and then on top of that you're sharing your voice whether talking singing sharing stories sharing songs so were you at all hesitant or nervous when starting your channels because even you mentioned you still get the stage right there are you do you have to like shake off your nerves before you press record walk us through that So I think now, like when I'm sitting down to the camera, I'm definitely way more comfortable than I have been. Like you could probably go back into like the Deadlands videos. And I used to be super awkward. I used to just be like live one take and then just like start screaming into the microphone. (laughs) I used to not be like expressive at all when I was like doing my thing. And people were like, how do you not make faces? And I'm like, I don't know. I didn't think you can. Like, it's just like that weird dynamic of like, oh, I, I just feel so weird, like showing myself, especially because the the first live one take that I ever did was Circle With Me by Spirit Box. And it got like 500,000 views in like the first two days. And I was like, okay, so yeah. first of all, people want this. Second of all, I Holy literally shit. look so dumb, like doing nothing. Like I need to like amp this up. I need to say something. So gradually I, I just kind of like, put some spiels at the beginning of my TikToks now. I'm just like, by the way, guys, um, this song, I have like no idea how it goes. So we're going to see, you're going to see me like fall on my face maybe, but then you could roast me in the comments. So it's fine. And <laughs> people like dig it. And like, I'll, I'll put some like announcements there. I'll be like, go to deadlinesmerch.com or whatever. Um, I'll be like, we just announced a show. And then people will be like, holy shit. Like if I hadn't seen this TikTok, I wouldn't know. Now I'm going to your show. Mm -hmm. Now I'm doing this. Now I'm doing that. So it's like people like genuinely listen to like what 
you want to say so long as you like build a relationship and that's one of the things that like I'm super proud of like with our fans I feel very close to them if that makes sense but like no it like I I see many people like their usernames pop up so many times and I'm like oh my god like that's our friend like it's not like a fan like that's our friend they've been supporting us since the beginning um Mm -hmm. and there there's one girl that she bought the first Deadlands merch item ever and her name is Emily Ecstasy M online and I love her and I like I still see her like commenting I'm like girl you were there since the beginning and I love you like I I just see her and I'm like you're my friend you're not my fan you're my friend and mm-hmm. it's 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 so oh, it just feels so nice and there's there's people that we see like multiple times coming to our shows and I'm like you were at the last show and they're like yeah you remember and I'm like yeah I do like I remember your face I'm bad at names but I remember faces right? yeah, <laughs> yeah. same, same. <laughs> <laughs> it's so bad it's so bad I'll be I'll go up to somebody and I'll be like hey you you Tim and they're like John and I'm like Shit. <laughs> <laughs> I've stopped trying it's it's yeah. a lost cause for me <laughs> yeah yeah so at, at that point like when people introduce themselves to me I'm like I don't remember names so I might ask you again and they're like that's fine and I'm like great <laughs> so yeah. I'm like at least if, if we're You're like there. it's gonna have to be <laughs> it's exactly the worst when someone comes up to you and they're like do you remember me and I'm like yeah <laughs> and like yeah. the shaky like please don't ask me if I remember your name but like yeah. yes like yes. some people will do that I haven't seen them in like three or four years I'm like that's not fair that's yeah, not fair no, literally. <laughs> and I'm like but, yeah. shit but, but like if I remember I'm not gra- like you. grateful and all that because it's obviously amazing when anyone comes up to us ever and like says hi. of course yeah <laughs> no definitely definitely yeah and I get that and it's scary when people come up to you and they're like do you remember I'm like oh yeah you were like <laughs> at that one show yeah that show in that city where we played some songs yeah <laughs> yeah and they're like actually no I met you at a bad omen show and I'm like oh <laughs> right <laughs> yeah that's what I said that's so good so awkward so <laughs> bad but like I love you anyway <laughs> well I don't know about you Alicia but I have a feeling it might be time for our big showdown end round yes of- Rapid fire questions. Yeah, you're going to tour. So, rapid fire? Well, well, a medium rapid fire. But we have four questions that we, yeah, (laughs) it's all like crazy business. But yeah, Um, we have four questions we ask at the end of every episode for every guest of jaw dropping moments in your career or just in your experience with music. So, the first one here is what is the most jaw dropping experience you've ever had at a show? My show or any show? And and it could be yours, could be someone else's, just a show. Okay. There's like two experiences, I could say. So going going on stage with Moshe and White, that was just like, I could not even breathe. When I was going up on stage, I was literally shaking like a <laughs> chihuahua. I was like, oh my God, there's 7,000 people in front of me. What am I doing? Um, and like, especially being in a band that you... I have listened to since you were fucking 12 years old it's like nuts yeah but it's a big thing I went to a Bad Omen show in New York City they, this was the tour with Dayseeker and Make Them Suffer and there was there were so many people coming up to me and like I was just shocked like I didn't I, I don't know like you you always think you're like oh like a million people saw this or like 500,000 people saw this but like you never think it actually translates into real life like right. if that makes sense because like to me those views like they're they're a number like I'm like okay so this is how well my video is doing this is what I should do to bank off it or whatever like I think I think more of like business sense when it comes to like the terms of views um and it's kind of weird but like having people come up to me at the concrete jungle tour and like seeing like there was like a group of people like surrounding me and I was like oh like this is so (laughs) weird and so surreal um and also one of one of the other things that happened at wage war um so Anna actually made this happen but 
she was like, yeah, Cody wants to meet you. Like, can you come after the show and like meet Cody, the the singer of Wage War? And I was like, he wants to meet me? Like, <laughs> no, I want to meet him. Like, he wants to meet me. And she was like, yeah, like, let's meet you up. So I met Cody. He was fucking awesome, by the way. Even even after just playing his ass off and oh, just awesome but like those were like top three draw jaw dropping moments no. i feel like for me and i was just like oh my god it's so great. and oh ones. i have one more i'm so sorry this is this is forever <laughs> so i for deadlands we have probably played like 15 shows like maximum like we obviously were brand new we we've only been around for like a little over a year and um or maybe two years i don't even know i have no concept of time but it's like <laughs> Yeah, time is fake. It doesn't exist. Um, I was just a concept. We're just no. <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah. I actually, I genuinely don't know what day it is. And I think Tori, like when I was emailing you, I was like, oh yeah, I can't wait to like have the interview tomorrow. You were like, it's actually Wednesday, and I was like, oh right, yeah, Wednesday. It's so funny you were like, even better. That's good. <laughs> yeah, I was just like, cool. Now I don't have to scramble. So yeah. yeah. Um, so we've only played like 15 shows as a band, nothing like extensive at all. Um, and we played this one show at 317 Main Street in Farmingdale, which is like a local venue near us. We were the first like actual like band bill that played there, um, because we're friends with the owner, Chef Eric, fucking awesome dude anyway. Um, but we got to, when we play Crushed in the set and I it was a big stage. So I was like trying to run around naturally, especially because I love big stages and I love running around on big stages. So I'm running around. I literally could not breathe. So I was like, oh my God, like, I don't even know what to do. I'm just going to point the mic out and like hope for the best. Um, And it was, I believe the second chorus coming up where it goes, you want to see me. And then I was like, (gasps) And then I just hear the audience like singing that back. And I was like, wow. Oh, wow. The, for the first time hearing that, it was absolutely insane. And uh, CJ, um, our guitarist, and Kyle, our drummer, like they both heard it and they were like, whoa, <laughs> like that just happened. And we were both like, holy shit, like pe- th- this is actually making an impact on people. And that was, that was a full amazing, story. man. Yeah. Oh congratulations that's a huge moment thank you thank you it definitely was surreal (laughs) and for this next one I feel like we kind of touched on it when it came to your first videos but I'd love for you to dive deeper into it so what's the most jaw-dropping misstep earlier in your career and what's the lesson you learned from it hmm so one of the things I'm very transparent about is I do use autotune like genuinely when you want it to be like a professional production you use auto-tune just to just to like fine-tune everything and I do have it turned down low like it's not like I'm like oh my god t-pain but um <laughs> sometimes like yeah like, you can I have that got me, me. <laughs> that got me good t-pain. um I have done it for attack attack covers though like stick stickly I will turn it all the way down that's and- the moment to do it <laughs> yeah, oh yeah that makes absolutely sense. absolutely I'll turn it all the way like the retune speed to zero and then I'm like auto-tune free baby yeah and it's like <laughs> horrid horrid but like the effect is there so yeah normally I have my auto-tune turned down lower but when I was doing covers like when I was first starting, I didn't know how to turn it down. So like I had CJ build me a vocal chain. Um, and so I would just use that, but like, it was definitely like audibly there. And so like, sometimes it would like mess up and I'd be like, that's a really good take except for like that one part. And then I was like, "Mm, maybe people noticed. People definitely noticed. Um, so I definitely corrected that and I was like all right we're gonna instead of having the retune speed like this we're gonna have it like that like the opposite direction so I've been turning the auto-tune down since like six months ago I want to say at least um and it's been working like so much better and that that was just one of the things where I'm just like ugh, watching back it's just ew but now I'm like all right we corrected it we're better and I I always try to be transparent about that stuff because like Nothing is worse than lying about like, oh, I 
auto dudes, auto dude or whatever. It's on every single yeah. record. It's on yeah. every single like professionally done cover now. I'm like, I don't give a shit. You know, I know. Great. Everyone knows. Perfect. It's just it's using it in the right areas. It's not overdoing it. It's not to hide your voice. It's just to make things sound as professional as possible. And then, you know, pull the odd pain moment where you want to actually use it as an instrument in itself. So the exactly. fact you have it all about it yeah and yeah. it doesn't mean you can't sing I think like that's such a misconception about production yes. value and auto-tune is like that that's correlated somehow but it's not at all like every artist ever does little tricks in the studio to make things sound great so absolutely yeah. absolutely well and my my favorite thing about auto-tune is that people think you can auto-tune screams which is absolutely not <laughs> how it works so I'd I would love to hear what that sounds like though yeah <sighs> or maybe so, I wouldn't I, I don't think you do <laughs> <laughs> so okay so if you have it like t-pain level it sounds absolutely disgusting like it sounds horrible it's like blah, 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 blah. like it's trying to find a bitch the whole time but it can't so it's like hysterical when you hear it full my friend full metal jesse um did a video of this a while ago and she was like let's see what auto team screams sound like and she did it and i was just like oh my god it's so bad like it's horrible <laughs> But like, again, if you're using like a tasteful bit of auto-tune, it doesn't affect them like at all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, like most of the times, especially in the one takes, um, like all I do, I just press record and I keep the whole thing running. And then I really don't do any like post after that. Like it's it's literally just like I put into the mic and then it's done. So I, with the amount of auto-tune that I have on it, since I don't have a lot, like it doesn't affect it at all. Right. Um, but for like a stick stickly cover, like an attack attack cover, when I got to go T-Pain, um, <laughs> I have to like cut it out and then move it to a different like stem, not stem, track. Like a, like I have to put it onto a different track. Yeah. Put it onto a different track and then turn the auto-tune off because it'll sound so bad if I don't do that. <laughs> the more you know. The yeah. more you know. Yeah. I, I, it's fascinating to me. It's all stuff that I wouldn't know because as much as we love singing so much, I genuinely never have tried to record something myself. So I wouldn't yeah. know that auto-tune on screaming sounds like horseshit. <laughs> I wouldn't know <laughs> that there's like such a fine line between it sounding so fake and then sounding like, like all right, it's just a polished record. So that was a cool yeah. insight. Yeah. <laughs> And you, you um, don't think about it either until you're doing it. It's it's very strange, especially because I'm not a producer. I never claim to be a producer. I know the bare minimum of everything. Um, I'm just like, I do my thing and then I get out. So <laughs> that is it. And then I'm like, all right, these little things that you pick up along the way are like very interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And the next one we have here is the most jaw-dropping female artist that you would love to work with. Mm, oh my God. You know, I I definitely when I was growing up I always wanted to work with Nita and so really? like have yes wow. like I I would look up to her and I'd be like she's fucking awesome like she rips and mm -hmm. now going on tour with her I'm like this is so fucking weird but um if we're talking vocalists Melissa Cross is one of the like female people I really want to fucking like I just want to sit in a room with her and just listen to what she has to say I'm like I don't care if we're talking about vocals I don't care if we're talking about metal tell me what you had for breakfast like yeah. I love you <laughs> she's phenomenal that that episode she's we did insane. with her was like one of my favorites and we're like down. neither one of us are singers and we were just like tell me more so just I, in I awe the amount of knowledge she was dropping on us and then how friendly she is and her thoughts on spirituality and intertwining that with like our love of metal it was just a wicked conversation yeah I mind. can only imagine I gotta go and watch that episode guys <laughs> like oh, man, you'll, 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 you'll dig it you'll watch <laughs> us try to sing it's great <laughs> she she like right, tried to teach go. us the basics of like screaming and yeah you'll see it was awesome <laughs> it takes time definitely takes time <laughs> Yeah, more well, than all I got like right now is attempt. meow. Like that's yeah. all I could do right now. Meow. That was that was what <laughs> fabulous. <we're> fabulous. <laughs> Authenticity. You. Authenticity. Yes. Always wins. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Well, for our last one, the most jaw-dropping misconception about you that you wish people understood. Oh. <laughs> These are fucking awesome, guys. Jeez. Hey. It's what we do. <laughs> 
the most jaw dropping misconception. I I mean, hmm. There's I guess there's two. One of which okay. is that I can't sing because I use auto tune, which we touched upon. Like, yeah. Um, but I think a lot of people think I'm tall, and I've mm. gotten it so many times. And aren't you filming from like here up most of the time? <laughs> yeah, but it it's like so weird. Uh, so many people have come up to me when they meet me and they're like, I thought you would have been like five foot 11. In reality, I'm five two. I'm like a midget to them. Oh, we have two little jumping bees with me today. No, literally. <laughs> literally. <laughs> and so I'm like, I'm so tiny compared to what they think in their head. Recently, mm -hmm. I, w I went to, um, uh, I saw Taylor Acorn and Loveless. I went to that show and someone came up to me and they were like, I thought you were going to be like 5'11 and I was like what they were like you give up tall girl energy which is which to me gives compliment. yeah and I'm like that to me is like big dog energy so I'm like yeah, oh, yeah. you thought yeah. I was tall yeah like let's we're go. out here swinging yeah. you know what we we were speaking to another vocalist um in like a symphonic metal band you know like theatrical huge music and she said the exact same thing and I think it really does come down to like stage presence and how powerful your voice is I I definitely thought you were taller than five two as well to be honest same. and it really yeah. is just like an energetic thing like you have a huge presence so congratulations that's a that's a that high-ass compliment, compliment. Thank yeah you. thank you I will <laughs> definitely take the big dog energy compliments like oh <laughs> You know what? I think this is like a really good one. That's like something that really frustrates me in the metal industry. Um, so I think one of the biggest conception, like misconceptions, um, especially like around women is that like, oh, like they need to be sexy and like this and that they, or like they want to be known as like the sexiest metal vocalist alive. Like that's not something that I care about. I don't, like, I could put on a fucking mask for all I care and be like, yeah, man, like, I don't give a shit. Focus on my vocals, not on my face. Like, I I commend Sleep Token a lot for this. And I think with their, like, stage work, they do kind of, like, give themselves, like, a little little friskiness. But that's, like, <laughs> their image. Like, they're, they're, like, the sex band currently. But um, I genuinely, like, I don't want to be known as, like, the the sexiest hottest girl alive in metal like that's not appealing to me I want to be known as a beast I want to be known as a powerhouse I want to be known as someone who can do all these fucking vocal abilities that like had like most of the human population can't do like that's one of the misconceptions that like really grind my gears and I just want to be known for the music you know what I mean totally totally Fully. I think even yeah. as presenters, we feel that sometimes that there's yeah. like this expectation of how we should look or that you need to dress a certain way. And I used to that. feel but, so yeah. weird. Yeah, I used to feel weird showing up to things wearing something like this, you know, because we yeah, weren't showing too. off what people, you know, thought that we should be. And then you just realize, oh, that's bullshit. It's about the talent, the conversation, the voice. And that's what matters. So look exactly. at us. Look at all of us in our T-shirts today. Let's go. So <laughs> Let's true. Go. I never would have done this when I was 16. No Neither chance would have seen I, me in a T-shirt. So yeah, honestly, so thank you for saying that, Casey. Like, I hope that that's something that we all can pass down to anyone else who's also coming into the scene is like, you do yeah, not do have to show cleavage or, you know, wear tight pants, wear whatever the fuck you want. And if you want to, then show it off. Exactly. Because yeah. we have our days where we do, and then we have our days where we're like this, but it doesn't yeah. always have to be one or the other. So really, exactly. I think that's very important. And duality yeah. is beautiful in the, you know, as Slipknot would say. Yes, yeah. yes, we are on, we are on a Slipknot note. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> But that yeah. is all we have for you, Casey. It has been honestly such a blast having you on this podcast. You are amazing. Everyone who's watching, thank you for listening. First of all, Deadlands is going on tour. They're playing Blue Ridge Rock Festival. She's going on tour with Nita Strauss. Make sure you, you know, Crazy. catch her when you can. And if you're watching here, she's with the band. On behalf of my co-host, Alicia Toot, I've been Tori Kravitz. Tune in every other week here on notfest.com and all streaming platforms. And we'll catch you later. Bye, y'all. <laughs>